thanks for joining me, uh, Jan. Um, you're the or one of the organizers for the uh, Polish Grand Melee. Uh, see, from everything that you've posted on Facebook, it seems uh, like a very successful day. Uh, you had 32 players over three different eras, uh, with uh, Age of Vikings being the most popular one, followed by Age of Crusades and Age of Hannibal. Do you want to give uh, people a quick introduction, and then we can move on to the uh, uh, the tournament discussion? Oh, well, uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to be of help, and I'm glad we met uh, via Facebook. Uh, I think that's great that Saga skirmish game Facebook group connects people uh, because I met a whole lot of people from around the world who play Saga basically uh, thanks uh, to this group so so that's great to have it and uh, thank you for inviting me I'm for for, for now uh, I'm a Saga tournament organizer for about four years I, I think it's it's past four years since I started organizing uh, Saga tournaments in Poland uh, I, I'm a fan of this system, and uh, it's it's my main um, war game uh, since then. Uh, the the first big thing which we did as uh, as a community was uh, the um, grand campaign in Age of the Wolf in the first edition. Um, in 2017, 2018, we had uh, I think it's it's one of the biggest Age of the Wolf campaigns in the region where we had uh, 22 players at its peak. Um, then uh, we finished it with a 16-player tournament in Warsaw. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, um, other communities in other cities in Poland, like in Poznan, in Bydgoszcz, in Wrocław, they were growing and uh, they were growing strong. Uh, we met uh, in Poznan in 2018 with Chris Hense, who is our mutual acquaintance, uh, and with other guys from Bydgoszcz and Wrocław. And we discussed the idea of uh, Saga Grand Mele Poland because back then um, Polish uh, Saga distributor tried to organize uh, Polish Saga championships, but they uh, unfortunately failed due to lack of promotion and lack of information about the tournament. And uh, we thought that uh, it, it's it's left simply by fate. Uh, fate left uh, this uh, task to us, the fans, to do it. So. Um, we organized basically um, voluntarily and non-profit um, Saga Grand Melee 2019, two years ago, and uh, it was uh, a bit smaller. It had 30 players. I mean, it, it was 28 because two people dropped uh, just before the tournament. And so we had only Age of Vikings and Age of Crusades, but we had uh, three guests from Ukraine. Uh, and I salute you guys, best regards for you, because I know Saga uh, has a great community in Ukraine, so I hope to meet you again. And um, it was it was a great achievement for the community at, at that uh, time, at, the, at this period. Then, of course, pandemic came and uh, we stopped meeting regularly, uh, as we did, because we had monthly tournaments, for example, in Warsaw, in FGB club. Um, which which I was very, very proud to be a referee of. And uh, in Poznan, in Warband, in Bydgoszcz, in Magma, in, in Wrocław, in Bolter.pl. And uh, after, after the pandemic, I mean, the lockdown ended, uh, people were just hungry. They, they wanted battle. They wanted uh, this, this great tournament. And with a new group, a new team, um, we are very glad that we could uh, satisfy <laughs> and their uh, lust for battle. And um, well, that's basically how we came here and uh, from where we came. Um, we were all uh, or hi historical um, fans, fa I mean, fans of history, of medieval history, and um, war gamers. And some of us played Warhammer. But not all of us. For some of us, Saga is uh, our first and probably only system. Some of us have so big collections that we play Hail Caesar, for example. Uh, only in March this year, we played um, like, you know, Saga themed Hail of Caesar game uh, of Battle of Brunanburg uh, from 937, if I'm not mistaken, AD. And we had like 
1,300 models which uh, okay. on the table, which were all Saga armies, but we will use them for Hail Caesar. But that I, I, I digress. Uh, you wanted to ask about Saga Grand Mele Poland, did you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, thanks. We, uh, maybe we stay on topic and, and we will discuss the, the, the other battle uh, some other time. But uh, let's start off. Um, you uh, you ran three different uh, era books, so uh, Age of Vikings, Age of Crusades, and Age of Hannibal. That's right. um, that's uh, very interesting because a lot we see uh, the eras being mixed, especially when uh, you add more and more eras, it becomes more and more fragmented. So can you maybe uh, tell people why you decided to keep it uh, keep it split up in the in the different era books? Uh, I think. We wanted to honor um, the original design because, if I'm not mistaken, it, it's told in Age of Crusades book, uh, or uh, maybe even the main rule book. I'm I'm not really um, confident on where, but uh, Saga designers wrote that mixing uh, errors uh, is not going to bide well for balance, and uh, we wanted to stay also on topic, so. We don't have any Vikings fighting crusaders. We wanted to see really uh, like this uh, climactic epic battles between um, historical armies. They are, of course, they are not 100% uh, historically accurate because you know you have, uh, for example, um, step peoples fighting with Norse gales, which didn't happen in uh, in in history. But uh, as yes. far as we know, as far as we know, as far as we know, that's right. That's right. Of course. But uh, we wanted to keep it nice and clean uh, so uh, that we don't have any arguments about balance. For example, if you met um, Ordenstadt while playing Norse Gales, I think you would be outmaneuvered very easily. So that's, that's another thing we wanted to... Oh, <laughs> such a wonderful cat. <laughs> He uh, always always finds the perfect time. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, um, so yeah, if you if you were a Vikings player or Norse Gael player and you met uh, Ordenstadt or, for example, uh, Moors, uh, you would find their multi activations to be very hard, very difficult to counter. Uh, you would be probably outmaneuvered, and uh, that's basically what these eras are about uh, Age of the Vikings, in my opinion at least, is about face-to-face um, -face combat, like, like really melee. Um, Age of Crusades is about your maneuverability and uh, also um, ranged combat sometimes. Uh, and Age of Hannibal, well, it's it's more of a mystery to me because I, I, I didn't have time to collect any army for it yet, but uh, from what I heard and from what I, I saw on the tournament, it's uh, like this top creme de la creme um, age for Saga with, with best designed armies. So we wouldn't like to see, for example, uh, war elephants backed up by Carthaginian abilities or Numidian abilities uh, to trample over some poor Norse gales. Yeah, I, I, uh, I completely agree with that. And uh, I think it's a good way of, uh, of keeping the flavors of each of the army books as well. Uh, however, you did use uh, or include the old friends, new enemies selection. I saw the step people were included. So I'm always a big fan of that because it, it broadens the uh, the scope. Um, and, and it also allows the uh, Age of Invasion people to uh, to participate in a lot of different different eras as well. Um, have, did you find any, I, I believe I saw one or two uh, old friend, new enemies, not that many people decided to go down that route. But did you notice any... Uh, uh, any discrepancies or any uh, difficulties with that? Uh, I think uh, I think not. Uh, actually, Step People's player was fifth in um, Age of Vikings division. Uh, he's also a good player, so no wonder why he was uh, fifth. <laughs> he was um, he was also playing um, fairly uh, melee focused armies like Yom's Vikings or Vikings or. Norse Gales, so that's probably uh, to his credit. Uh, that also, I mean, that also um, made for his uh, good score because those were the armies who uh, cannot really counter uh, the Han battle board really well, but 
uh, I think um, that wasn't um, uh, that that couldn't be called a discrepancy really because uh, the Han Battleboard right now uh, isn't uh, at its peak power like it was like uh, like um, in the last days of first edition when Age of Arthur basically or not Age of Invasions but Age of yeah. Arthur, uh, no, Age of Arthur uh, sorry Asius and yeah. Arthur yeah that's that's the correct word sorry. Asius and Arthur was introduced, and uh, those battle balls were really, really strong. But then second ed edition came in, and they were outclassed. So I think still, if you are Norse Gale or Viking or Yom's Viking player, you you can play against it. Like for example, Yom's Viking player tried to um, use terrain to his advantage, and Norse player, uh, I mean Norse Gale player. Uh, tried to face the step people's head on and to push them back into the uh, bordage. So there are ways to counter that. The, some of them failed, some of them prevailed. Um, you you have to be prepared uh, for uh, you have to be prepared to be flexible when you come into tournament, especially when um, we have our special rule set which allows pe uh, people to take uh, another point of uh, forces. And to switch them between battles because we want people to uh, think out of the box and to be prepared uh, not to play with only one roster uh, but to face off um, unnatural enemies i mean uh, for example if you are playing scots uh, you want to face the vikings you want them to charge you to bounce off and to beat them because scots are really made for that uh, but when you meet the normans you can't really chase them. You are peppered with arrows and you don't know what to do if you don't have your mounted heart guards. And, uh, but if you do have them, you, see, you have a chance to chase down and uh, at least trample their archers, archers or maybe even face um, Norman cavalry head on and have a nice melee exchange with them. So uh, I think that uh, that's uh, actually a rule which allows for more flexibility, and we uh, are uh, strong support uh, supporting it. Um, I mean, we are strongly supporting it, and uh, we want players to think out of the box. Yeah, no, that sounds like a good uh, um, uh, good trade-off between flexibility and 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 keeping everyone uh, giving everyone a chance. Um, I think some some armies probably uh, have more benefit than others, but I think it's it's good to feel go into a match and, and feel like you always have a chance as well. Um, do you do you think you'll uh, ha are you happy with this setup or are you uh, are you planning any big changes for the the uh, the upcoming uh, grand melees? You mean about the rule set, right? Uh, yeah, about the um, about the yeah. Yeah, we are happy because it, it was tested. It has been tested for years now because um, I invented this rule set uh, and uh, other people uh, put their good ideas into it um, when we were talking Grand Melee Poland uh, first in 2018 and then um, I tested it in our uh, in Warsaw in War Wargaming Club uh, FGB Tigur Kove Gribitevne uh, where we had these monthly tournaments and um, it, it, it really worked out uh, pretty well. Of course, there can be discrepancies in um, army composition when you consider, for example, uh, armies who have mounted options or uh, some javelin options uh, to take, which they wouldn't take normally, but they want to use them against specific enemy. But I mean, mm, it's it's part of uh, of of saga flavor. Like uh, you have that historical legendary feel that you are commanding a much great, greater army, or maybe it's uh, better equipped than than only one weapon from your roster, and you can go to your wagons and switch your weaponry before facing another enemy on another day, or something like that. Uh, I hope players. I can leave to players um, the, the explanation of that. And uh, yeah, I, we are happy with that uh, rule set. Mm, we are also um, supporting players who have painted armies. We don't want any, you know, soda cans acting as warlords or unpainted armies to win our tournament. So uh, we don't have any system for, for example, 
extra points for painted armies and allowing non-painted armies. We simply we we simply allow only painted armies to participate in the event. Yeah, and the the photos that you posted so far have uh, been uh, really great and uh, give a really good feeling uh, about what what was happening and what people are taking, and also to see some of the the really good paint jobs. So maybe we should. Uh, uh, Kill the suspense and say what were the results? Who uh, who is doing well? Um, let's start with the Age of Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for your appreciation. Uh, well, in Age of the Vikings, I think it was no surprise that um, Normans won because uh, we had very experienced Norman player uh, Piotr Holanowski uh, at the top of the list, and uh, he he made uh, a good uh, a good change in his roster. Um, um, when uh, according to you know previous years when I when I uh, when I saw him playing, uh, he took angry monks, uh, so he could um, like uh, stick uh, the, his herd guards together in bigger units, uh, and he didn't worry about um, you know saga dice because he could still generate new saga dice from dying angry monks. Yeah. Uh, so even though he didn't generate many at the beginning of the turn. Uh, he could still gain more and um, punch his enemies again with with powerful abilities. Uh, I think he had uh, uh, he had uh, really uh, it's it's no surprise that he won, but he had really good competition two years ago, and this year we had uh, really good players um, starring, for example, uh, Kuba Vishnevsky from Bedgosh with his Skrellings, uh, which are very extraordinary army. Um, but they, uh, they too aren't ready for everything. Like they, they don't have heavy armor, they don't have cavalry, uh, so they are very specific. But uh, of course he had an advantage because um, not many players know how to face uh, Skrellings, how to uh, beat yeah. them in battle. Uh, but uh, he's also a very, very good player. I know him uh, since uh, 2017, if I'm not, I mean 2018. And he was playing Yom's Vikings back then. Uh, then he switched to Norse Gales. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he played um, Greeks now in, in Age of Hannibal to local tournaments. Uh, so yeah, he's an experienced seasoned player. And uh, I think uh, he, he took strengths simply to have fun uh, with them. And still he got the second place in the tournament. Yeah, that was uh, really, really good to see. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, so the so we had the top top three being Normans, Skrellings, and Normans. Uh, yes, some yeah. of the uh, what we discussed uh, before I hit record as well, uh, just saying that the mix of uh, warbands uh, was actually you see that it, it gets influenced a lot by geographical locations, maybe in in England and and in Western Europe. You see a lot more uh, Anglo Danes and and uh, Carolingians and uh, and Anglo-Saxons, and then maybe in 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 Poland, there's a different war bands which are historically more interesting uh, for the players there. Yeah, that's that's right. Because for example, uh, when we will uh, discuss the Age of Crusades, you will see uh, that we are really really glad uh, that Baltic region um, was recognized in this book, and uh, most of our players were playing uh, Baltic Crusaders, Ordenstadt, or um, pagan peoples, because uh, they are simply connected to our history. And uh, unfortunately, there is no connection in medieval times between Welsh or uh, Polish. So that's why, for example, there are not many uh, Welsh players in Poland. Uh, but uh, I, th I think in time, when players um, will see merits in playing uh, Welsh, uh, they, they will start to collect uh, them. Uh, we had great uh, Welsh player Chris Hense from Poznan, uh, but he he's unfortunately uh, living in the US now, so he couldn't join us uh, for Grand Melly Poland 2021, but maybe he will join us uh, the next year. We'll see about that. Uh, but we have uh, really good Anglo-Saxon players, actually. Uh, one of them participated in our tournament instead of a Viking player who withdrew uh, due to uh, some private case. Uh, but but he, he hopped in onto that train and he had real fun. He's Radek Ravic, he's one of the org organizers. 
and uh, he was uh, ready to fill in the gap if someone dropped from the tournament. So I think that having uh, such people um, as a reserve is also very important where, or when organizing a tournament. Uh, if someone drops uh, from the tournament, you, you can have a good player to put there. And uh, for example, Radek has uh, armies for all periods. So from whichever age uh, someone would drop, he would instantly take his place with uh, Anglo-Saxons, with Byzantines, or uh, I don't know what he's collecting for Age of Hannibal even. He's really, he's, uh, really going to town with his collection. But um, we also had a really good Anglo-Saxon player, um, Jan Sava, who's uh, actually uh, one of the youngest players in Poland. And he, one of the, uh, actually one of the most uh, titled, entitled, um, uh, is that the correct word in English? Sorry. I mean, he, he won uh, many tournaments uh, mm -hmm. back, back, back then. And, and he was playing Yom's Vikings on Grand Melee Poland simply to test new roster and to have fun. Uh, so I think that's why uh, he didn't um, make it to the top. But yeah, we, we have fair representation for uh, Western and Eastern um, factions. The only, um, uh, like the only um, really, really saturation being, uh, uh, the sat saturated age being the Age of Crusades where we want to play our region. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really interesting uh, comment and also uh, I was surprised to see that many uh, Orden Stats Baltic. It was a real Northern <laughs> Crusade you were you were running uh, yeah. with, uh, with only I think if I, if I'm counting correctly there were uh, one Mutatawiya and one Saracen and the rest are all uh, nor somehow they ended up in a in the Northern Crusades. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's so, funny, actually. Uh, <coughs> But it's good to see a, a completely different uh, different mix of of, uh, of people playing. Maybe quickly we, we talk about the Age of Hannibal. Uh, I'm also not as familiar as I, I would like to be, unfortunately. Uh, but there we have uh, the top three being Gauls, Numidians and Numidians. So, uh, right. Uh, a lot of yeah, Numidians were a surprise, actually. I, I hope to see uh, many more Carth Carthaginians and um, Greeks, maybe some Romans. Uh, but uh, yeah, Numidians uh, were the stars of the show uh, because uh, for um, for n not so many players we had uh, two Numidians and quite um, quite good players at that. Um, we had two of our three Hungarian guests, uh, which I uh, of course greet and send best regards to. Um, in Age of Hannibal, one of them was playing the Numidians, Gabor Kovac. Uh, from Budapest, and uh, one of them, Gabor Sekris, if I'm not mistaken, that's that's his surname. Um, he was playing Romans, and uh, yeah, uh, Gabor Kovac was a really good player, and he outsmarted many of our players in Age of Hannibal with Numidians. Um, they were uh, a blast to play, from what I heard, because they um, combined poor elephant. Uh, distraction, like if you are um, if if you are familiar with the term distraction carnifex from Warhammer Forty Thousand, I think it's it's basically War Elephant in in Saga. It's a big guy in the center of the field who distracts your opponent and uh, who takes all the hits on him while the um, fast uh, and uh, flanking units uh, go around like a buzz of insects and throwing javelins everywhere and um, decimating your opponent. So, so that's basically what Numidians uh, seem to be about uh, for, from what I saw. And uh, both Gabor and Andrzej Gurski, our player who came with his uh, son, Staszek, uh, that's, that was really cute to see <laughs> them both playing a father and son. And they, they played Numidians and they played it really, really well with guerrilla tactics and um, you know this hit and run warfare but uh, i think their real star star shooting star uh, and the star of the show was uh, victor shadow who won um, uh, age of hannibal division with goals and uh, I, I i don't want to sound mean but i really wasn't expecting that because uh, victor is uh, the youngest player from our bunch he's uh, he's 14 years old 
and uh, I, I've seen him um, go on these tournaments uh, in FGB in Warsaw on those monthly tournaments 2018-2019 and he lost uh, everything but he simply was learning and he was generating chakra or mana <laughs> for his great um, stunt at uh, Grand Melee Poland 2021 uh, because uh, you know he, he he was always losing every battle but he came to another tournament and another and again and again and uh, I think that for three years of learning since he was 11 and now he's 14 uh, he grew up to be quite a veteran and uh, his last battle with Gabor um, Numidians against goals goals against Numidians was a sight to behold really uh, so uh, we're really glad that he won I think uh, everybody is, is really impressed and uh, Gabor, who fought his final battle with um, with Victor, he congratulated him and said he was honored to uh, fight with such opponent. So yeah, um, Victor also scored uh, best uh, in um, scenario victory points because we had greater victory points for uh, victories and draws, uh, zero for um, defeat, obviously, and uh, regular scenario victory points for Tigers. <coughs> And he scored best. Um, he scored. I not if I'm not mistaken. In five battles, he scored 140 uh, scenario victory points. You know, massacre, survival, and uh, control. And uh, he won. Um, he won uh, the prize for for that. It was um, a voucher for painting studio. So he, I, I, I'm really glad that it went to him. Yeah. So congratulations to uh, to Victor. That's. Uh... Sounds very amazing, and it also gives hope to uh, to myself. I uh, I often uh, 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 linger around the bottom of the the, the tournament tables as well. So uh, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Victor is a better learner than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the case. <laughs> yeah. So um, maybe we can move on to the scenario choices. So that's always a, a very contentious uh, issue with tournaments. But uh, you had it over two days, so you had the, the the privilege of uh, playing five different scenarios. Yes, that's right. Do you want to uh, walk us through why you uh, why you pick these particular scenarios? Yeah, uh, actually, thank you for asking because uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's one of the topics I like to discuss because um, we are always discussing this with the team before the uh, tournament. I mean, always we organized Grand Melee for two times now. Uh, and and that, that's not really many, but mm, we are always discussing it thoroughly uh, because we want players to have fun and actually feel the competitive part of Saga. So uh, the first scenario uh, on the first day, on Saturday, uh, October the 2nd, was Clash of Warlords. And uh, that's my, my personal pick because mm, um, I, I believe the Clash of Warlords is best for a warm-up. Uh, you have to rehearse something, you have to remind yourself of the rules, um, you, wa you want to start this battle and uh, have a great day. Uh, so, uh, I mean, so start this day, have a great day and start it off with uh, a, gr a good battle where you feel good playing your faction and not like, oh my gosh, um, wondering why I did this mistake uh, and so on. So Clash of Warlords is uh, really simple, and we opened uh, competition with that. Then we have Feasting and Pillaging, which is a race actually for objective markers, but it's also about how daring you are, because um, it's, it, it, you, ha you can take the objective markers from enemy units who uh, pick them up um, by challenging them in melee and uh, winning the melee uh, and forcing them to withdraw. So uh, if you are daring enough, you can take these objectives at the last moment from your opponent when he's almost um, going to drag them out of the battlefield. And uh, that's, that's really adre an adrenaline booster. Uh, we like that uh, as, as our second um, scenario. And we had actually uh, one change uh, in this scenario because uh, our players requested it. We had actually uh, two requests from our community, which we uh, thought was nice to apply. Mm, in Fisting and Pillaging scenario, uh, a unit 
uh, was able on Saga Grand Melipol in 2021, a unit was able to drag the objective marker from the battlefield only if all of its models uh, could uh, touch the board edge uh, in one movement activation. Uh, because in the original scenario, if only one model touches the board edge, uh, you are out. You drag the objective marker out of the battlefield. And uh, for some of the players from their experience, um, it seemed um, really uh, like, like it seemed too fast. It was too fast. They were able to drag this objective out of the battlefield in two turns, basically. So uh, we, we decided we decided to have this uh, limitation with all uh, models in a unit being able to touch the board edge uh, in single activation, and then they were able to drag the objective out of the battlefield. So that was a little tweak. And then we had controlling territory at the, on the end of Saturday. And controlling territory is really your basic wargaming scenario. Uh, there is nothing uh, extraordinary about that besides Saga Mats <laughs> going on with control victory points. Um, uh, it's, it's simply take and hold. You have four objectives, you have to hold them, and uh, the objectives which are further from your deployment zone are uh, scoring higher. So uh, it's uh, also a great scenario for Saga because you have to engage uh, if you want to score high. And Saga is mostly about engagements and mostly about melee. Shooting is very dangerous, but it's, it's not a game about shooting really. You have more, most abilities are for charging, for melee, and, and the ongoing theme is about that. So. Uh, we thought that it, it's it's uh, fitting into the uh, theme of the tournament, and it's a basic scenario. So um, you know, w players would would not overthink that. Yeah. Uh, it's also yeah. nice to close the the first day off uh, after a long day of uh, of, uh, right. of tournament. But That's then right. the, the next day is a little bit more administration <laughs> uh, on the in yeah. terms of uh, the scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting off with Old Feud, which is a very interesting one. Did you provide the um, the models, or uh, did people have to? Uh... No, we uh, asked people. We uh, specifically uh, asked them several times on our Facebook page, so everybody remembered. If I'm if I'm correct, everybody remembered, or <laughs> you know, borrowed some models from other players on the day of the tournament. But um, we, we yes, we alarmed them that, guys, you have to have your own models for Old Field, your own heroes. And uh, our painting competition, which was also a really tough competition, um, and there will be more more photos about that on our fan page soon, um, it allowed only um, heroes, heroes models. So you could take um, your warlord, your probably your priest, or uh, someone like that, or curate, but there were no Irish, um, or your old feud hero uh, for a painting competition. So we connected that with the painting competition and everything went nicely. Uh, but uh, why we chose old feud? Um, two years ago, we, choose, uh, we chose um, Desecration, which is more straightforward. It's about destroying the objectives this time uh, to increase your cap, uh, your points cap. But uh, old feud is more saga-like <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying uh saga theme it's about heroes clashing in the middle of the battlefield because in at the end of one of the turns uh, if they are too close to the board edge uh, they are they are dead uh, yeah. and uh, and uh, the battle ends so uh, so they have again they have to engage they have to close the distance and uh, we really liked that and because two years earlier we had desecration we thought that well, there is nothing to change uh, on the first day. Um, actually, we changed the Battle of Heroes to Clash of Worlds, but never mind. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, we wanted to change something, and um, Old Feud was seemed like the way to go. Uh, it, it's it's a very saga esque scenario. Yeah, and, and people had great models for their heroes too. <laughs> yeah, it's not one you often see in. Um... In, in tournaments, but it's uh, it's a very interesting one to uh, to throw in there as well, and it really tests people's flexibility. And then That's the right. uh, the final one, 
which which I always find very difficult and uh, is the tale of challenges. Uh, That's right. I love it. <laughs> I know that not many people uh, really like to play it uh, like um, for their casual games because uh, it can be pretty hardcore. But uh, that's why we took it as our um, tournament finale two years ago. And people like that, players like that. So we thought that, well, we will make uh, it a final battle again. And uh, to me, it's really um, a scenario about growing up to what you are um, prioritizing, what's your goal, and claiming it for yourself. So it's, again, very saga Scenario, very saga-esque scenario in which you have to uh, tell your opponent in his face that you are going to do this, this and that, and then you have to accomplish it. So uh, that's again really um, like this legendary battle uh, of medieval heroes where they were uh, like introducing themselves to their enemy and claiming ground before they actually did battle. So uh, we, really, we really liked that scenario and actually people had fun with that. Uh, we had even a draw or, or at least one draw in Tale of Challenges, which is unsound of because one point of difference actually gives you um, victory or defeat. And uh, point difference can be huge, astronomical actually, with um, the minus points from unaccomplished challenges. So, uh, so having this, this one draw was actually really funny. And for the guys who actually didn't fought for, um, didn't fight for top three, and they had a draw at the end, it was it was fun to see that uh, the, the in friendly atmosphere they ended the battle and had fun. So um, you know, you you can't expect um, the outcome here really. You 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 are not really able to predict that. That's that's what I try to say, yeah. and that's what we like about Tale of Challenges and why it's a fun final battle of our tournament. And are you uh, are you happy with the uh, the choice of uh, scenarios, or you you think you're gonna switch or replace one or two for next year as well? Well, um, or is it too early to say yet? <laughs> well, um, in my opinion, change of plans is a very interesting scenario because you have to. Um, think about three types of uh, victory points at once because you have massacre, you have survival, and if I'm not mistaken, you are scoring control for enemies uh, half of the board uh, if yeah. your units are there. But it's really complicated. So I think we will have a poll because, um, for example, we are making a polls on uh, we are making polls on Saga community fan page uh, on Sa Sa Saga Polish community fan page on Facebook. And uh, that's why we chose uh, Age of Vikings, Age of Crusades, and Age of Hannibal, for example, because we know that, uh, thanks to the poll, we know that there are not many uh, people playing Age, Age of Invasions in Poland, simply because it's outdated now, but also uh, because it's not really connected to our history and not many people um, see Romans or Huns as their, um, <laughs> as their, um, uh, yeah, how to say it, spiritual animals <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I, th yeah. I think that's correct yeah so so mm, I think that when new age of invasions book will come out um, it will be fa fairly popular due to new battle bots and new abilities and people some people are actually waiting for sassanids with um, anticipation uh, that's that's nice to hear from the community so we took the poll and we chose the three ages because of that. And I think we will have a poll about scenarios for the next Grand Melee Poland. Uh, because uh, I think the Clash of Warlords and Tale of Challenges as the, an opener and the final battle, um, they are a must-have right now for a warm-up and then for this really epic uh, confrontation where you have to introduce yourself to the enemy and then grow up to it. Grow up to it. Uh, but then... I mean, feasting and pillaging is what uh, was played on probably every tournament in Poland. Uh, so it's 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 really uh, no big deal if if we swap it for something else. Controlling territory, it's nice, but it's simply your average war gaming scenario. So 
maybe that's that's change that will change and old food maybe it's it's going to be the secretion again because it's um more straightforward but we will see we'll see what community tells us yeah okay no that that sounds great uh maybe to to wrap things up uh how 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 do you feel the the grand melee uh, affects the polish saga scene is it uh is it really energizing the scene and and uh, making everyone excited and and working towards it uh how, how do you experience that uh i'm really glad to say that yes it, it has been energizing polish scene uh and uh, it still is because um even though there are two weeks we are two weeks after the event people are still uh putting out their um photos and um, relations on on facebook mm, i mean reviews that's yeah. that's the english word um the reviews for uh, on facebook and some of them are like these uh, thematic you know historical records of uh, the battle with their ancient uh, enemies and so on and so on and some of them are simply gaming um battle reports and we are really, really glad that people um, came up with these ideas and they are promoting the event themselves because it's basically a tournament from fans uh, to fans, like made, for, made by fans for fans. Uh, and uh, we want it to, st to stay like that. And um, I think it's, it's great. It's the best thing uh, for Saga community in Poland. Uh, that we all get to meet each other and uh, exchange our experiences and we can meet people from other countries as well. We had Ukrainian guests uh, two years ago and now we had guests from Hungary uh, and uh, they were all really, really very nice and friendly people uh, uh, with which uh, we uh, will have a beer <laughs> one day uh, if we didn't uh, <laughs> the last time. And um, and yeah, I'm really glad uh, with how it went. But thank you very it's much for your time. Mm -hmm. And it's thank been uh, it's been great talking to you and uh, seeing all the pictures that you post. So thanks a lot again, and uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much again, and see you. <laughs>